Ugers. Many of you have been asking me recently to uh, do a little tutorial video on this pick strum combination that I have been doing in many of my music videos recently. So here you go. So uh, first we're going to start with the finger picking pattern, which you can use on its own. It's a great finger picking pattern. I used it that way uh, alone without the strumming for many, many months. And uh, then more recently, I just found myself sort of naturally adding a bit of strum in, into the finger picking pattern. So you could just do the finger picking by itself. You can do the finger picking with the strumming. You could make your own variations, whatever you like. But I will teach you first the finger picking pattern, then we'll add the strum in at the end. Now, the first thing to know about finger picking is that what we usually mean when we're talking about that, as opposed to like picking out a melody, we're not talking about that what we're talking about is arpeggiating so which is basically an arpeggio is a chord played one note at a time that's g chord arpeggiated it's the chord that's that's arpeggiating and um it's just playing the chord one note at a time instead of all at once like you would in a strum and so finger picking is just about picking those notes out in a particular pattern and um the way it's typically done and the way it's done in my pattern is that every measure you're doing the same pattern and you might do say what you heard me do before was I did now I'm doing a different rhythm but that's an A minor chord and let me do the regular rhythm that's it and then the F chord and then the G chord and my fingers on the right hand are doing exactly the same thing each time and my fingers on the left hand are just holding the chord while they're doing that so that's basically what we're talking about that's that's what this kind of finger picking is about so I'm going to teach you the pattern that I just did and uh, so there's two main things you need to know to do a finger picking pattern the first is you need to know which fingers are you using and in what order on the right hand and which strings are you using them on in that particular order. So first, a little notation. We're gonna use the standard, this is a standard notation for finger picking. Put that where you can see it. Pima, P-I-M-A. You don't typically use the pinky in a finger picking pattern. So P is the thumb, I is index, M is middle, A is the ring finger, and um, I think those are based on Spanish or something, but P-I-M-A is what you need to know because I'm going to call those out uh, when I'm showing you what I'm doing. Now, in my particular pattern, I actually don't use the ring finger. I just use the first, I use these first three, fing first three fingers, the thumb, the index, and the middle finger only. And I use them in the order thumb, middle, index, thumb, middle, index. That's it. Same pattern twice and it makes up six different picks in it can well we'll talk about rhythm later on but but there are six distinct sorry six distinct picks that I'm doing in the pattern and it's always thumb middle index thumb middle index so it's actually simpler than a lot of finger picking patterns because it's the same thing twice in the pattern um, now which strings am I playing uh, let's talk about string numbers so this ukulele is tuned G, C, E, A, which is the most standard ukulele tuning. There are others, obviously. You may have a different one, in which case you won't be able to play along with me, at least not fingering the chords the way that I am. Um, but you can finger, if you know the names of the chords and you're tuned differently, you'll finger whatever you need to finger to make those chords, and then you can play along with me. Um, however, huh, there goes my phone. <laughs> we'll just ignore that. Um, this is a low, this uke is tuned low G. G, C, E, A. My dog has ways. Standard, most standard ukes are tuned high G. I have one of those. We will, several of those. We will demonstrate also using the high G, but this is what high G sounds like. But this one is low G. So it's going to sound a little different. The, the same pattern will sound a little different. So I'll show you on the high G because that's probably what most of you have but this one sounds so much better, so I'm gonna do it on, we'll show, give you the main lesson on this and then we'll show you what it looks like on the high G. Um, 
So, um, arpeggiating, yeah. So the so the order of the so strings, yeah. So I number the strings from bottom to top. One, two, three, four. So the A string is one. If you have a baritone uke or your uke is tuned in D instead of C or whatever, you, you, the names of the strings will vary. That's why we're giving you numbers instead of names. So, but for a G, C, E, A uke, the A is one, the E is two, C is three, G is four. So I'm going to use those numbers. So in other words, the the lowest note, it is the lowest note on a low G uke. If you have a high G uke, it's not really the lowest note, but... <laughs> The lowest note is the four string and then three, two, one. Uh, so the pattern then, so remember we're doing thumb, middle, index, thumb, middle, index. Same thing twice. But the thumb is moving between the four string and the three string. The index, the middle finger, which is the second pick in the pattern, is always on the high string, the A string, number one string. The index finger is always on the number two string, which in our case is the E string. So the middle index always sounds like that. But the thumb, remember we're doing the pattern twice, right? Thumb, middle, index, thumb, middle, index. Both times the middle and index are picking the one string and the two string. The thumb, however, is picking the four string the first time and the three string the second time. So G and then C. Okay, so this is what that this is what that sounds like. So we're doing thumb, middle, index, thumb, middle, index, thumb, middle, index, thumb, middle, index. So you hear the thumb is on four, and then it's on three, and then you get this middle index in between. So, so in the case of a standard tune uke, G A E C A E G A E C A. -E. If you have a high G uke, that's going to sound a little different, right? It's going to sound like this. I forgot what chord I was just playing. Let's do the C chord. I don't think that's what I was just playing, but <laughs> I think it was A minor. I was doing A minor, right? <laughs> okay, sorry. So it will sound like this on a high G uke. They really want to get me. So, I'm going to turn that off so that doesn't bother me anymore. Sorry. I should turn the phones off before I start. <laughs> anyway, so that is what that sounds like. Now notice, stop. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so notice <laughs> they really want me, whoever that is. No, <laughs> notice that it sounds a little different on the high G uke, and in particular, First and second beat sound the same, right? Because it's high G and I'm fingering an A minor chord. So that's an A on the G string and an A on the A string. They come right after each other. Now on the on the low G uke, you don't hear that because your A's are in two different octaves, right? You have a low A and a high A. So you will encounter this Many, most chords that you play, typically, on a ukulele, are major chords and minor chords. Those each have three notes in them, but we have four strings, right? That means that there's a note that's duplicated. In some cases, it'll be an octave, so it won't be exactly the same note. It'll be the same note an octave apart, right? Like low A, high A. But sometimes, as Sometimes they'll be exactly the same note, and that happens more often on the high G uke than it happens on the low G uke. So on the high G uke, you will frequently have two notes the same in the major and minor chords. If you're playing a seventh chord, a seventh chord has four different notes, so all the notes will sound different regardless of which uke you're playing. But if you are playing a major or minor chord that has only three notes, you're going to hear, in many cases, the same note twice. Oh well, it still sounds cool. and. Um, because you are, if you're playing a song this way, you are changing chords hopefully relatively frequently. So you're not going to hear that note 
together happening the same way a lot. So anyway, it sounds cool. I did it for many months on a high G uke and it sounded really cool and people said nice things about it. And now I mostly am playing the low G uke. It sounds even more cool because more often on the low G uke, you're playing four different notes instead of three. But so you'll notice that certain chords, if you're playing a high G uke, especially you're gonna hear the same note twice. It's okay, still cool. And the same pattern still works, I wouldn't worry about it. That's the F, F major chord. And that has the same, the same duplicated A as the A minor chord. Yeah. Now the C chord, you have four different notes, right? Because you have, you have a C, low C on the C string and a high C on the A string. So the duplicated note is a C, but they're actually an octave apart on either uke, low G or high G, doesn't matter. So that sounds cooler, right? A little bit than the, than the A minor and the F chord where you've got a duplicated note. This is the G chord, and the G also has a duplicated note, right? It has G on the G string and a G on the E string. So that's the two string and the four string. And the A minor chord and the F chord, the duplicated notes are the four string and the one string, right? And because the four string on a low G uke is a lower octave, they sound like different notes when you play them on the low G uke, but they sound like the same note when you play them on the, on the high G uke. So anytime the four string is involved, it's gonna sound cooler on the low G uke. Sorry if you have high G, but it's cool either way. Um, and in the case of the G chord, it's the, um, the G string. Yeah, so again, it's the four string, but in this case, it's the four string and the one string, right? On the A minor, it was the four string. No, it's the same thing. <laughs> Either way, on all of those, it's the four string and the one string. No, sorry, G chord is the four string and, pardon me, four string and the two string are the two Gs. The duplicated note is always at least two strings apart and it may be three strings apart. So in the case of the A minor and the F, it's three strings apart. It's the four string and the one string. In the case of the G, it is the four string and the two string. And in any of those cases, because the four string is involved and the four string is an octave lower in the low G, it could sound different there. C chord is gonna sound like four different notes on all of them because it's the three string and the one string that are duplicated. You can't necessarily, it's an octave. Boom, 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 boom. I can't sing it. <laughs> but that's an octave, those are both C's, but one is a low C, one's a high C. Anyway, that's probably more than you wanted to know, but. That is a bit about how it sounds when you do it. So now to teach you how to how to do that. So I already taught you the pattern. So so it's thumb middle index, thumb middle index, and the strings are four two one three two one four two one three two one four two one three two one A minor. It's the same exact pattern with the right hand, no matter what chord your left hand is playing, and the left hand just holds the chord and your, your right hand does this stuff. Now, what's cool about this is once you learn a finger picking pattern, and I've used basically the same pattern for virtually everything that I've done finger picking on for the last, I don't know, year, year and a half. And it sounds cool no matter what you do and you can vary the rhythm of it and you can add the strums that I'll show you in a bit and you can do all sorts of other cool stuff. And it makes stuff sound really cool and it makes it sound like you're doing something way more complicated than you're doing because it's just arpeggiating, right? That's all you're doing. You're holding a chord with the left hand. It sounds like you're playing a melody, right? Like you're doing something more interesting with your left hand playing notes and stuff, but you're not. You're just holding a chord and you're playing a pattern with the right hand and it's the same thing over and over again. So it's not that much more complicated than strumming once you learn it, right? Strum. Once you learn how to strum a particular pattern, you do everything like that and it's easy, right? It's not a big deal. And it 
sounds cool, but this adds something more interesting, but it's not that much more complicated than strumming. Now, um, a bit about rhythm. So if you are doing a song that has a, a three feel to it, if you know about rhythms, a song that's in three is either in waltz time, one, two, three, two, two, three, one, two, three, two, two, three, that's a waltz. Or it might be a six, eight, which is kind of double, it's, a da, 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 it's more of a triplet feel. Triplet, 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 one yen, one yen, one yen, two yen, one yen, two yen, one yen, two yen, right? That's triplets. One, two, three, two, two, three, one, two, three, two, two, three. But it's more of a, like each beat has three, three component parts to it, right? That's if it's, if the song is in six, eight instead of three, four. If you don't understand what that means, it doesn't really matter, but Either way, it has a feel of three instead of four, which is most songs are one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, right? Most songs we do are in four, four time. That's, that's the most common time signature. So three beats are less common, but they show up in lots of songs too. And so the nice thing about this finger picking pattern is because it has six beats to it that you're doing with your fingers, right? Thumb, middle index, thumb, middle index, thumb, middle index. That, 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 that. If you do a nice straight rhythm like that, it fits songs in three really well, right? So say we're playing a song in three. One, two, three, two, two, three. straight rhythm, da, 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 thumb, middle index, thumb, middle index, same pattern, fits a song in three, just like that. Now, what you heard me doing earlier was you heard me doing a beat that would fit songs in four, which is most songs. And what I had to do to make that fit with six beats, six finger picks in four beats, I do a syncopated pattern, right? Now that is exactly the same. If you've learned that strum that I sneaked in there a little bit earlier, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up. That's like the most common strum you learn after this, <laughs> right? Once you graduate to slightly more complicated strums, that's probably the most common one people learn. Down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up. I'm doing exactly that same rhythm when I do the finger picking, right? Because down, down, up, up, down, up. I don't have enough fingers. Down, down, up, up, down, up. That's six, six hits, right? Six strums in four beats. That, 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 that. Six hits in four beats. So it's the same thing we're doing with the fingers. Down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. It's that same rhythm. So now you have a way to play a song in three. One, two, three, two, two, three. One, two, three, two, two, three. And you have a way to play if it's in four. Down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down. It's the same. It's the same pattern with the fingers. I'm just doing them in a different rhythm to fit whatever the song is. Now, you may notice that some songs in four maybe don't feel like that rhythm fits. Maybe you want a different rhythm. You can vary it and you can, you can throw in a couple extra beats if you want to hit eight uh, finger picks instead of six in the pattern. You can do, you can fig you'll figure out variations once you get comfortable with the basic pattern. I'm not even sure I, and I've done that, and I'm not even sure I would know how to teach that because it's kind of an organic thing that I've done when certain songs seem to call for something different than one of those two ways of doing it. I've found myself doing different things. I'm not sure I could tell you offhand what they were, but you'll probably eventually, if you use this pattern and you get comfortable with it, you'll eventually find yourself doing variations of it when that seems not to fit the song exactly, but some other pattern does, you'll figure it out. Um, so now, let's add the strum. So 
I did this right at the beginning. You heard me do it this way. So all I'm doing is I'm substituting a strum with my forefinger. I, you might try something else if it works for you. I use a strum with the forefinger of all four strings and I substitute that for the first pick of the four string that you would normally do with the thumb. So instead of picking that with the thumb, I'm strumming all four strings. That's it. And then, and then middle index, thumb, middle index. So that's the same exact thing as before. It's strum, middle index, thumb, middle index, strum, middle index, thumb, middle index. free to make up your own variation or do something entirely different than this. This is what I do. People have been asking. Now you, now you, you, now you have it. Now the other thing I've noticed that I uh, have sometimes been adding is there's a second strum. There's an up strum that I add on the sixth beat of the pattern, right? The last, that last pick that normally happens with the index finger the end of the pattern right before the down strum, I often will substitute an up strum with the index finger. And it's kind of like as I'm bringing the index finger back up to do the down strum at the beginning of the pattern, I find myself just, because normally you'd be picking this the two string with that. So instead I'm just kind of running it up all the strings and then down again. So when I do that, I'm substituting an up strum and a down strum for two of the picks in the finger picking pattern. But that's it. And you could substitute different strums in different places if you felt like it. Probably I just found myself doing those one of those two variations organically at some point after I'd been doing the finger picking pattern for a while. I just found myself adding the strum. Uh, so this is what it sounds like with both strums. Let's see if I can do it. Maybe not. <sighs> Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. And I'm doing both the up and the down with my index finger. And then, so it's, it's up, down, middle index, the middle, up, down, middle index, the middle, up, down, the middle. That's not right. <laughs> middle index, thumb. It's hard to say it and do it at the same time. Nice and slow, but that's what I'm doing. So I'm substituting the last pick of the six pick pattern with an up strum and the first one immediately after that with a down strum. So it's kind of it's kind of one fluid thing where the up strum comes up and then it goes down on the next beat. But that's the last pick of the pattern and that's the first pick of the pattern. So that's like a pick up. Bum, 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 bum. gonna do that's the thing I don't I, mean, I don't plan this out typically whether I'm going to do just the straight finger picking pattern or I'm gonna do the strum at the beginning of it or I'm gonna do the strum at the beginning and the end I don't really plan that necessarily I just kind of feel out the music and whatever happens happens that might sound over your head right now but that's because you're just learning this it took me a while to get that finger picking pattern. Um, <laughs> I figure I should tell you, well, two things. <laughs> You've now, I, I've taught you everything there is to teach you. Now I'm just gonna tell you a couple stories. So you're done with the learning part, I think. Um, but two things. So this finger picking pattern, I learned because I heard, uh, there was another ukulele player that I hung out with quite a bit in the beginning of my ukulele life, my first year or so as a ukulele player, and he did a finger picking pattern with that same rhythm to it, bop, 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 that rhythm. 
but I didn't know what order the fingers were or anything. And he showed it to me once, and it was over my head at that time. And I said, oh, I'll get you to teach it to me another time. And then I do the Seasons of the Ukulele. You all should do it. It's awesome. Seasons of the Ukulele rocks. Uh, Seasons of the Ukulele is a weekly themed thing online. It's free. It's fun. It's really a great place to learn new stuff. And uh, so we have a new theme every week. And one usually the theme is about a particular kind of music or artist or subject or something. Um, this one week, the theme was to do a tribute video to someone else's, so another seasonista's video, right? So somebody, you wanted to find a, a video that someone else had made for a, a previous season. The seasons are a week, by the way. Don't let the name confuse you. So you wanted to find somebody's previous entry that you really liked a lot and wanted to do a tribute to. And it occurred to me that this person I've been hanging out with for this first year, the first video I ever heard that inspired me to want to join the seasons was this beautiful song that he did with this finger picking pattern. And I went and listened to it and I said, I'm going to do that. But to do it properly, I have to do the finger picking like he does it. And I didn't know how to do it. And I couldn't ask him then because I wanted to surprise him with it. So I had to figure it out on my own. <laughs> So I googled finger picking and I couldn't find anything like what he was doing with that kind of rhythm. Most of the patterns you find are, have, have eight picks in them instead of six. I couldn't find any that had six and that had that kind of rhythm to them. And um, so I tried to watch his videos and slow them down and figure out what he was doing. And he was playing them on an eight string ukulele so it sounds even different than either of these. And you know, I just couldn't figure it out. But then I tried a combination of what I had found online and the rhythm that I knew he was doing and I came up with this pattern and it sounded a lot like what he was doing so I made the video. But it took me like a day, you know, a day of like playing it over and over and over again, like a lot, a lot, to get to the point where I could muddle through the song and sing it at the same time, right? In the beginning, don't even try to sing, just practice the finger picking pattern because the minute you try to sing it, it gets more complicated. So practice your finger picking first, and then when you feel like you kind of have the pattern, pick a simple song that where the chords don't change too frequently and that you know well and where the singing's not too complicated, and then try singing with it. Um, but I wouldn't try to do that right away. But so I, try, I had to learn the finger picking pattern first, and then I tried to sing this song with it, and so it was really a struggle. I made the video, and then I liked the finger picking pattern, it was cool, and then I showed him the video and he said, no, that's not what I'm doing at all, my pattern looks like this, and he taught me his, and it's different. But by then I liked mine, and mine is pretty easy, so I kept doing it. It's easier than most, because it's the same thing twice, right, instead of six different kind of beats, it's just three beats twice, right, with the, the, the finger pattern is the same thing twice. So I kept doing it and uh, found myself using it for all kinds of things, found myself adding the strong weight around stuff, but it evolves over time. You get more comfortable the more you do it. So that is my point. Practice a lot, like just play it, just play it a lot and play it on different things. And eventually your comfort level will grow or you'll create your own, which is cool. In which case, come back and make us a tutorial of that. Yay. Um, so that's how that works. The only other thing I wanted to mention is like I said, I couldn't find any pattern, anything like this anywhere. And it turned out the thing I thought I was emulating was a different pattern entirely. But I went online. No. <laughs> Recently, I was at uh, our ukulele festival in New Jersey and Craig Chi did a boot camp and he taught a finger picking pattern and it was almost exactly the same as my finger picking pattern. Uh, he, the only difference is, I mean, he did it with a straight rhythm, not the syncopated rhythm like I do. So he did that syncopated. He did like this. And his was three, one, two, four, one, two, three, one, two, four, one, two. Something like that. Three, one, two, four, one, two, three, one, two, four, one, two. And mine is four, one, two, three, one, two, four, one, two, three, one, two. So he, he does the thumb the opposite way of I, that I do it. He does the three string first and then the four string. I do the four string first and then the three string. But the rest of it was exactly the same. And basically those are the same as each other. They're just swapped around, right? It's like if you started my pattern in the middle, you'd have his pattern or vice versa. If you started his pattern in the middle, you'd have mine. So they're basically the same. Um, 
So that was kind of validating to discover that someone as amazing as Craig Chi does almost exactly the same finger picking pattern as me, and he taught it to us in his boot camp. I uh, hope I'm not giving away any trade secrets. Uh, but that's the only place I've ever seen that pattern anywhere else. But there you go. Maybe that legitimizes it. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, that's my finger picking pattern. Have fun. Let me know how it goes. And uh, yeah, post post video links. I'd love to see them if you uh, if you use this or any if you have questions if you have anything you want to share about it if you come across any patterns that are similar or different or whatever you want to share do that in the YouTube comment section below this video if you're watching it on YouTube all right rock and roll you've gone